back to the classroom. You know, there's a lot of coaches that put a great deal of thought and effort into orchestrating their pregame routine in order to prepare their team for the game and, and to give themselves a competitive advantage. But what about halftime? It's been my experience that as crucial as halftime is to the game, it's often overlooked and neglected and not taken advantage of in terms of preparing for the second half. What I want to do today is just give you six ideas that I think will make halftimes go a little smoother and will give you a better opportunity to prepare your team for the rest of the game. The first idea is simply don't talk too much. Halftime is not the time or the place to go in and rant and rave about your poor shooting percentage, about the officials, about the heat in the gym, about the guy who's sitting behind your bench heckling you and or your players. Instead, halftime is a place where you need to concentrate on two or three key points and then make necessary and realistic adjustments. You don't want to go in and overwhelm your team. You don't want to go in and, and replay every negative thing that happened in the first half and then try to correct every single thing. If you do that, your team is going to go back out into the gym completely overwhelmed. Instead, focus on what's really important. Pick out two or three things that you can change and that will have a positive impact on the rest of the game. Don't try to put in a motion offense at halftime or a matchup zone. Instead, maybe it's personnel decisions. Maybe it's running a, another quick hitter at crucial times. Maybe it is changing your, your defense slightly. But whatever it is, make sure that it's realistic and doable. Remember that halftime is for adjustments, not speeches. Save the speeches for before the game, or after the game, or even the next day of practice. But remember that that small window of time that you have is to make adjustments. The other benefit of not talking too much is probably the most important one. It will give your team more time to shoot. If you're ahead at halftime, chances are that you shot better than your opponent either from the floor or from the free throw line. If you're behind at halftime, chances are you didn't shoot as well as you would like to, didn't shoot as well as your opponent. It's highly likely that your team needs to shoot even more than they need to hear from you. I can't tell you how many times I, I walk into a gym and, or watching a game and see a team racing out onto the floor with 15 seconds to go in halftime. And almost always, that team does not get off to a good start at the beginning of the second half. Don't do that to your team. Have them prepared enough before the game that you can talk very quickly and concisely during halftime and give them a chance to warm up. Number two, keep your emotions under control. Don't be overly excited. Don't be overly frustrated, no matter how the game is going. Your players are going to reflect you. Your attitude could very well determine how the second half starts. Try to be positive. If your team is not playing well, boost them up and be more encouraging. If your team is playing extremely well, tell them to keep it up, but at the same time then you can be a little bit more demanding, a little bit more critical. You want them going out onto the floor on an even keel, not thinking that the game is won or lost when there's still a whole nother half to play. Also, be very aware of your body language. You cannot walk into halftime and tell your team, hey guys, we've got them, 
we're in good shape. We just need to do this, this, and this, and we're going to win the game. If your head is down, your shoulders are slumped, you shuffle up to the front of the room. What they see could very well be more important than what they hear. Don't let your body language have a negative impact on the rest of the game. The third idea is get feedback from your players. The players on the floor can see things that you and your coaches can't see. Don't be afraid to ask them, what do you think? What will work? What should we run? It's not a sign of weakness. It's not conveying the message that you don't know. Rather, what it is, is giving them some responsibility and accountability for their actions. It's re-emphasizing the fact that this is our team, not my team. And oftentimes the players will see something that they can take advantage of that maybe you overlooked. Just like your assistant coaches, you don't have to put into action every suggestion that they make. But at least get that feedback and get something else to think about. The fourth situation, the idea is address the foul situation. Remind everyone in the room who is in foul trouble, not only on your team, but on your opponent's team. Encourage your, your guys to play good defense without picking up another quick foul. At the same time, possibly discuss how can you draw that third or fourth foul on your opponent's best player? Do you have a special play that you can run immediately at the start of the second half that might lure the other team's best player into fouling you, especially if they're not completely prepared for the second half? The fifth idea, focus on the first four or five minutes. If you're ahead, focus on extending the lead. By doing that, you're going to be ahead by more points, but you're also going to shorten the game. If you're behind, focus on cutting into the lead. You don't have to get the lead all back at once. Give your team some realistic goals that they can shoot for. If you're down by 10, hey, let's cut it to 5 after 5 minutes. Give them something that's realistic that they can work on. Something that's, that's not 20 minutes long, as in, in our case if you're in college, or 16 minutes if you're in high school, but short segments of time where they can achieve a realistic goal. And the last idea is have a definite warm-up and shooting strategy. You know, it seems like there's two cardinal rules in basketball. One, bad shooters are always open. And number two, at halftime, the worst players always have the ball in their hands. I don't know what it is, but you know, on most teams, hey, the 11th and 12th guy in the end of the bench is always the greatest rebounder at halftime and always seems to get more shots in. You have to find a way to get your best players shots at halftime and get them to the free throw line. Hey, if your post player has missed four or five jump hooks, get him on the block, get him four or five more makes to get his confidence back up. If you're missing threes, then your best shooter needs to get some threes in. You need to get to the free throw line in. Don't jeopardize your chance of winning because all your role players are getting all the shots at halftime. Okay, so just to sum it up really quick, don't talk too much. Keep your emotions under control. 
Get feedback from your players. Address the foul situation. Focus on the first four or five minutes. And then have a definite warm-up and shooting strategy. If you'll do these things, your half times will go smoother, will be more productive, and you'll get off to a better start during the second half.